so I'm Jaron Cohen. I'm the head football coach at Ponderosa. Uh, I've been a head coach for, this will be my 14th year. Um, I'd like to take the time uh, to thank you guys, take time to view this. My contact info is on, on here. Uh, I'm not a hard guy to find. Uh, you're always welcome to come to a practice. Um, shoot me an email, anything we can do to help. Uh, just let me know. Um, this is kind of a condensed version of a, of a presentation that um, I did at Denver Glacier this February and I just tried to truncate it a little bit for the sake of trying to keep in a 15 to 20 minute window. So uh, we'll get started right now. So what I want to talk to you about, the first thing is just kind of being intentional with, with how we develop our systems. Obviously at different levels um, there's kind of different things you can do, right? Some guys are youth coaches, high school, college, NFL, what have you, and, and you're kind of you're, you're kind of having to put your system into what your kids can do. Okay, at Ponderosa, we've had a lot of success. We've scored almost 50 points a game uh, two years in a row, and we're really changing some of the stuff we do offensively because of the kids we have. So I really ask you just to think about how do you come up with an O system? How do you come up with a D system? And then kind of think about your goals, okay? You know, are your goals to put a lot of pressure on the defense, get a lot of snaps? then you might want to be a tempo offense. Are you a guy who prefers ball control, um, you know, pounding the rock between the tackles, and you might not have that type of system for you? Um, and then really, the main things you gotta know is, what can your players do? What do you know, and what's your experience? Okay, I think as a coach, it's important, you know, to really highlight a system that, that you're comfortable with and that you know every part of it, you know what the line should do if we're talking offense, receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, every snap. And some stuff that may look great, if you don't have that knowledge base, it's not a system you should do. Um, so I really look at applying the same core beliefs to how you do practice. So uh, I developed these over the past, I don't know, four years. I'm always trying to work smarter, not harder, and kind of my core beliefs in players, and, and you'll have your own based on the level you're in, your experience, and, and kind of what you think um, players are all about. So I'll just go through these. So my core coaching beliefs, players have to want to be at practice, okay? And it, it's kind of semantics of it. Do I have to be at practice or do I get to be at practice? Um, and, and we really want to have our kids want to be at practice. So when we're developing our practice plans, we're trying to make them engaging, that kids know they're getting better, um, that they're not just going through the motions, and that everything that we do in practice is intentional for getting them better and keeping them engaged. Okay. Um, we also believe that players have short attention spans. You know, uh, it's really changed. You know, how we present our game plans has changed at Ponderosa. We used to just give them Word documents and send them on their way, and now we'll do some film cut-ups, um, we'll do presentations, we'll share notes on huddle, and, and kids seem to consume that information better. Um, I, I really think that the days of the coach talking for 15 minutes and then just players go do it, I, I just don't think that's good with, with players today. I think there should be a, a progression to your install, um, you know, a short talk, a walkthrough, a go do it. I don't think that 15 minutes of, of me talking and my players just standing there. Attention spans vary. I mean, I really think attention spans are short. And I think kids like to compete. Okay, so we'll do any drill we do. We try to have a winner and loser. And it could be as simple as, hey, if you lose this, uh, you know, pro agility drill, you got to do three jumping jacks. Just something to, to get kids competing. And I also think that players enjoy being the more physically fit team. We've been a, a no huddle, high tempo team uh, for three years here at Ponderosa, and we've won a lot of games. We've had really lopsided scores, really good defensive scores, and, and our kids know third, fourth quarter that we're going to be in better shape because of how we practice, and, and that feels good, and it kind of gives them a little drive to, to, to push a little harder in practice. What do players dislike? Okay, I think that you need to think about this, that they don't like standing around. You know, we're, we're lucky here that uh, we have 108 players in the program, and we're one of the smaller 4A schools. And with that, we've had to bring on more coaches and dedicate time to kids 
going and having JV install, having JV time. So we'll have all our kids together in Indy, but when we do sevens or inside run or situations, we'll move the JV down with a couple JV coaches to, to, to kind of mirror what we're doing. And they're not standing around. They're not just holding a bag every day. Um, you know, I don't think that being overly negative uh, all the time works. Um, I think you got to deposit in the bank. I can get on kids, I feel like, because for every negative, there's a bunch of positives coming from me and my guys. Um, I don't think kids like just being talked to and lectured. If you ask a kid, what's your least favorite class? He's probably gonna say that teacher who just lectures for an hour, think back to when you were in college. I mean, those, you know, when you're not being hands-on or interactive and you're just being talked to uh, in a one-way street, I think that can tune people out pretty quick. I think a slow tempo, a lot of standing around in between drills, a lot of wasted time, a longer practice. I don't think kids like that. Um, I also feel, you know, every drill you do, there should be a purpose to. Um, you know, you can hop onto Glazier.com, AmericanFootballMonthly.com, and, and get a ton of drills. And if they're not making your players better in your system, you probably shouldn't do them. You know, uh, we'll do everyday drills and they do get monotonous, but our kids know that they're there to make them better. You know, with our linebackers, we're gonna read keys every day and our players know that's gonna make them better and they don't mind doing that. I don't think kids like punishment conditioning. Um, you know, very rarely do we have kids run as punishment. Do we just line up and run 40s? Uh, we tell our kids if we have a great tempo in practice, great tempo in our drills, that's our conditioning for the day and that's well received and our kids will do that. Um, and then their conditioning while getting football better, for lack of a better word. And uh, it, it's worked really well for us. And they don't like just saying they're holding dummies. You know, kids don't want to be the, the scout D for 45 minutes a day. So as coaches, and obviously this is applicable to you guys because you don't even get that really small stipend that we get. You don't coach for the stipend. You coach because you love competing. You, lo you coach because you love making a positive impact. You coach because you love the sport, okay? And what feels great as a coach on the field, seeing a play you designed or suggested work, seeing a technique you drilled show up on film, and we really believe that you're either coaching it or allowing it to happen. You know, I, I don't let my coaches say, well, I coached him to do this, and then on film he's not doing it. Uh, my talk to that coach would be, well, what what are you doing in your coaching that these drills aren't translating to the field? What are you doing in how you're communicating with our players that they're not translating to the field? So I try to push the blame off the players and onto the coach, uh, if that makes sense. You know, as a program, and I think this is something that youth coaches can have a huge hand in. As you know, our game is under, you know, attack you see in the media a lot. Um, you know, at Ponderosa, I'd say there'll be four to five games a season where we're hunting for a JV or C team game because we had a team who had to drop it for low numbers. But I think where you can make an impact and win the parents and, and have them see the value not only on the field but off the field is figuring out some core values for your team, okay? Let your players have some ownership. Now, depending on the age, I don't know how that translates, but there can be something where, you know, you teach some values that everyone's going to want their kids to experience. My son's currently going into third grade in the Hawks, and I'll, I know my kid is learning the value of hard work. I know he's learning to be a good teammate, and I know he's learning to be accountable just through how they run their practices. Um, you know, we have our kids have a, have a hand in them, and we actually have our kids intentionally write out what do these values look like on the field in the classroom and in the community. And those are really our standards for behavior. And our kids appreciate it because as they get older, they're not gonna have someone over them. Sorry about the bells. With, you know, 4,000 black and white rules, but it's more standards. Okay, and this year, we just did it last week. We went with accountability, discipline, integrity, sacrifice, and work ethic. And, and I think you can bring those into a program at any level and communicate with your players, if you wanna be a part of this, this is the standard you're gonna live up to. And I think you communicate with your parents. This is what a Ponderosa football player has to do. This is what a Ponderosa player is gonna learn through our program. And, and I think it's not a bad shot 
to try with your guys to get more buy-in um, from your parents as far as what they're going to learn. Now let's talk about practice, okay? Uh, all that back stuff is kind of philosophy stuff that I think it's important for you to think about as you develop your practice because your practice should reflect your values and your philosophy as a coach, okay? What we do for our practice keys is we always say we set up focus points for coaching, tempo replaces conditioning, we have non-negotiable everyday drills, okay? But our players don't mind them because they know they're getting better. Our O-linemen are gonna zone step and combo up to a Mike Backer every day, okay? Our uh, linebackers are gonna read keys. Our cornerbacks are gonna do our technique, we call it side straddle, and work on their pedaling cushion every day. And then you can mix in some other stuff. Um, you know, we've always been a read team here, so we're always gonna do some type of mesh with our with our quarterback and running back. And they don't complain because they know they need to get that mesh done. We've really moved away from the full team stuff and into group, I encourage you to try this. Um, I'll talk more about it, but basically, if you're just running team all the time, what are your receivers doing on a run play? Okay, if you're just doing team all the time, what are your running backs doing on a pass play? And I think you have to work pass protection if your back's in it, but there's a time for that in Indy, okay? But you're not going full live. Is your running back really getting a lot of work on those pass plays? Is your receiver really getting a lot of work on those run plays? No. So we've moved to group, okay? And I'll talk more about that. Situational work, okay? I believe the game is won and lost on situations, and whatever they are to you. It could be third down. That's usually a big down to emphasize. You might be someone who thinks first down. You know, we need to win first down and put ourselves in second and medium or second and short. But I think emphasizing those situations really help your kids when it comes to a game and there's a play that you really find important. And we always want to have our kids competing. So we always make a checklist. All my coaches do this. Um, and it really gives your coaches ownership. Going back to coaches don't coach for the stipend, they coach because they want to have a voice, they want to um, contribute in a positive way to the program at whatever level. You know, what do you want your coaches to do? And as the head coach, all of my assistants make this checklist. Here are the skills they need, here are the drills that hit it, and they review it with me. And then they actually present it to my whole staff. Um, you know, we always want to create competition. We always want to review that every week. Okay, so if I'm the defensive back coach and I want my guys to get off a block, um, know how to turn with cushion, know how to play the ball, and know how to open field tackle, I might not hit all those in an indie period on a Monday, and I know when I go home and I check off what I hit, what I didn't hit, I better hit that Tuesday. It also really helps to streamline what you're doing. Okay, here's an example of linebackers. I'll kind of get out of the frame a little bit so you can see. What do I want my linebackers to do? You know, I think there's, I think sometimes coaches will overload their kids with 10, 15 things. And you almost have to determine what are you going to really put an emphasis on. You know, to me, a stance, if a kid's not in a textbook linebacker stance and he can make plays, I'm not going to freak out about it, okay? If a kid can't change direction, crossover run, read a key, that gets me going, and, and we're going to have a conversation. You know, for us, we see a lot of zone run. We always talk about tracking hips. Where are your eyes, okay? Um, we need to know our stuff. We're primarily an odd pressure team. We throw a lot of stuff at, at offenses. Kids need to know the blitzes. It sounds simple enough, but... We have stuff in practice that we make sure that our kids know them. We talk about being able to use their hands, tackle, and use their hands on pass rush. So these are the things, and it seems like a lot, but really it's six. Know your blitzes, use your hands on the run, use your hands on the pass, tackle, tracking hips and having leverage in your run fits, and reading keys. Six things um, that we feel like linebackers need to be able to do to play at a high level at a, at a varsity uh, program in 4A. Okay, so what do we do? Here's an example of a 15 minute thing we'll do. Okay, we'll put them on bags. 
change of direction, shuffle, plant, redirect, shuffle, weave, things of that nature. That's about three minutes. We'll always do key recognition with a back behind it. So we're reading a key and then our linebackers are fitting up on that back. So in that, I've hit reading a key and I've hit fitting up on a back and not overrunning a zone play all in the same drill. I'm saving some time. I feel like we're working a little smarter doing that. Okay, we'll do a blitz walkthrough. We have those bullet arms here or we'll use shields. So as we walk through the blitz, we're not just standing there and just walking through it. We're walking through and when someone shows, we're using our hands and doing some type of move and we're gonna do some type of fit and form tackle. Okay, and in 15 minutes, we feel pretty good that we've addressed movement, that we've addressed reading keys and using our hands, that we've addressed our run fits and knowing our blitzes, and we've addressed tackling in 15 minutes, okay? Sample O practice plan. Okay, we'll always warm up, obviously five minutes. We've done zero hour here for offense. People think I'm crazy. We're here 6.45 to 7.30 in the morning, 3.30 to 5 in the afternoon, and we're done. And our kids are home by 5.30 having dinner with their families, getting the work done they need to get done. It's easier on my coaches. I have a lot of coaches who are not on-campus teachers. They can come in the morning, couldn't be here at 3.30. We don't have to deal with weather in Colorado. We've only had one lightning so far in the afternoon. We never have to worry about that. You can get a lot done with the right plan, okay? We always want to compete, okay? You want to be a team that comes off the bus, first kickoff and is ready to compete. Okay, we'll do a speed period. This is something that's been huge for us. Um, it's a conditioning and it's a knowledge of plays where we'll just go on air with as many huddles as kids we have. We call a play, we're all a word association, no huddle team, and we run the play. And our coaches do not coach during it, which is hard. You know, we call the play, you spot the ball, we teach our kids how to run the ball into a coach who's the ref, we place it, we go. And if we see technique type of stuff, which is hard to see on air, we correct it in Indy. Okay, we'll do some type of Indy period, O-line Indy, wide receiver Indy, read period with the mesh with our QB and running back, group run, group pass. I told you we talk about that. That's basically our offensive linemen, running backs, and half the quarterbacks on one end of the field with a script our wide receivers and half our quarterbacks on the other field with a script, and we just run through the script. Okay, so it's all run here, it's all pass here. At the halfway part, we trade our quarterbacks, same script, okay? So our O-line is getting the work they need. Now we also have more O-line Indy in the afternoon. This was just for our zero hour. And then for our team, we'll just do situations. Hey, it's third and two. Hey, it's first and 10. Hey, it's fourth and nine. It's fourth and one, etc. So it's less team, more group, but everything has a script. And it's a little more time on your end, but I guarantee you when you're at practice and you read the plays off the script and your coaches know the plays if they're on different parts of the field, it's gonna really make your practice go a lot faster, a lot more efficient, and everyone will be on the same page. And that's all I have. Um, you know, if you are interested in talking about, there, there's a longer version of that with game planning on it, more of the practice planning, more delegation to coaches and things of that nature. Or if you ever want to talk about, um, you know, what we're doing offensively or defensively or with special teams or anything about, you know, kind of, kind of the, the, the culture we've created here, um, I'm an email away or just show up one afternoon or morning to practice and uh, appreciate all you guys do. Thank you.